This is a Qigong set called the Three Dantian's Nine Directions Qigong that comes to me through my Wu style lineage um, from my teacher's teacher, uh, whose name was uh, Dr. Li Li Chun um, from Shanghai, um, which is, he was part of the uh, Ma Yuliang lineage of Wu style Tai Chi Chuan in. Uh, in Shanghai. He was also a well-known Qigong master and added a lot of his own Qigong into the, the what he taught. I believe this may have been added in by him. I've not seen other Wu style practitioners or Wu style lineages um, doing this outside of the, uh, the Li Li Chun uh, lineage. Uh, but it follows all the body principles of the Wu style Tai Chi Chuan. So um, it, it's a good, it goes well with, the, with learning the Wu style. Um, this is a sort of energy gathering Qigong that's just very good um, for just uh, kind of calming your breath, um, increasing your body energy, increasing your blood flow, just some basic things like that. Um, it uses the two main body postures from Wu style Tai Chi Chuan, which are Wu Ji posture or empty stance and um, archer stance or bow stance. Um, first, we'll look at the empty stance, which is standing with your feet below your, the center of your feet below the center of your armpits and um, your crown suspended so imagine there's a string pulling the crown of your head up and then all of your spine all of your weight is hanging from that the top of your head so this will cause your your chin to be tucked in slightly your shoulders to be kind of relaxed to the front your chest to be slightly concave and your tailbone to be tucked under slightly as it hangs down as the the spine hangs down um and It'll, you'll usually cause your legs to be slightly bent. It's, it's uh, unusual to do this posture and have your legs totally straight. So your legs will probably be slightly bent. So this is called the Wuji posture or the empty stance. When you're standing like this, it should feel almost as though you're sitting on the tops of your legs. So because of the way you tuck your tailbone, which is the same thing you do when you sit down, it should have the feeling that you're actually sitting down onto your legs. In this stance, uh, we're going to do a little breathing exercise that um, helps work on the, the breathing for this and uh, just as a good kind of warm up. So when we breathe, we're going to inhale and imagine that the air is being pulled into the lower back, into the lower back. So as the air comes in, imagine it's filling up the lower back. And then as it fills that, it fills up the rest of your body, right? Your body is a cavity that's holding air. Imagine it fills up at the back first and then fills up the rest. As you exhale, imagine you have that cavity, right? It's just like a big, so I'm, I'm pretty beefy. I'm like a keg of beer, right? I'm a big keg of beer. And then you have a spout at the bottom of the keg or wine barrel or however you want to imagine it. And as you breathe out, so the physical act that you're breathing out is your diaphragm is pushing up and your lungs are closing and the air is coming out. But what you should be imagining the breath is happening, imagining the, the breath is draining out the front. So it fills up into the back, fills up all the way into your cavity, and then all of that air drains out into the front, uh, out the front as you're, as you're exhaling. So that's kind of the, the visualization you should have for your breathing. <clears throat> and then this breathing exercise, we're just going to raise the arms. So imagine that there's a balloon in your body and the balloon is filling up and it will press your arms out to about 90 degrees. In this posture, the palms should be facing down as they go up. And as this happens, you're going to be breathing in. You'll need to time this because one breath will take the whole time. As your arms go up, when they reach shoulder height, 
you're going to turn the palms over and you're going to begin closing the arms. So the shoulder won't really raise anymore. You might raise it about to, to 90 degrees and then the rest of the movement will just be the arm closing in to the head. This whole time will be an inhale. So you're inhaling and then once your hands are here and you start to close your arms, you're also going to sink down, lower your legs slightly. And continue inhaling and sinking until your hands are at your forehead. Now we're going to exhale and stand. So all three should time simultaneously. So your hands go to here, your body stands up, and you exhale. should all take the same amount of time. Right? So we're going to inhale, continue inhaling and sink, finish inhaling. Now we're going to start exhaling, lower the hands, and stand back up. And all of those should end simultaneously. So inhale, sink, stand, and exhale. And you can just do like three or four of those. I always learn to do three at the beginning. It's just a good breathing exercise. You can do however many you want to. Um, and that, that also helps you work on the breathing uh, in the form of this Qigong. That's the same breathing you'll be using. However, uh, I don't recommend trying to do that breathing during the Qigong at first. When you're first learning the movements of the Qigong, focus on the body work, ignore the breathing. Once you have the body work reasonably correct, add the breathing in. But this little breathing exercise at the beginning helps you keep training that breathing even before um, you get to doing the, the actual breathing in the Qigong. So you can practice your breathing there, and then once you get better at doing the Qigong, you can add the breathing into the Qigong. So the second part of the stance, right? So we have this Wuji posture. The second part of our stance that we're going to use is called the archer posture or the bow stance. And we're going to shift our weight onto one leg so that all the weight is rested on this leg. I can lift this leg without uh, any effort. And now I place that heel in front wherever it comfortably rests. Um, that resting point will adjust by how high you are, right? If I'm lower in my stance, it'll be further forward. If I'm higher in my stance, it'll be closer. Um, if you want to get a better leg workout, you can do it lower, but uh, I just recommend doing whatever is like easily comfortable. This isn't meant to be a strenuous activity. This is supposed to be easy. So just whatever height is comfortable, and whatever size stance that is. Then, in order to move forward, we're gonna push our weight forward by pushing from the back leg and pushing the hips forward so that our weight falls onto our front leg. As this goes, our torso will lean forward. And what we want to achieve is a line from the heel through the hips, through the shoulders, to the crown of the head. And that will be a, a line at an angle, right? And then we'll also have a second line from our shoulders to our front knee to our front ankle. And that will be a vertical line. So we're going to have two uh, lines, a, a, a horizontal or a diagonal slanted line and a vertical line. And that triangle is what's supporting our body. To shift the movement or the weight, we're just pushing. So if you're at the back, you push with your leg into your hips and push those hips onto the front leg. If you're on the front leg, you push from the, the front foot, pushing into the hips and push the hips back onto the back leg so that you're sitting on the back leg. As the hips move, the upper body will move with it, but don't feel like you're pushing the upper body. That will cause the wrong movement. You should be just pushing the hips forward, up forward, and backward, forward, and backward. And you can just practice that motion on its own outside of the Qigong as well. So that's the leg motion that we're going to use in this Qigong. The arm motion is uh, focused around the three Dantians. So uh, the Dantians are, uh, in, in Chinese, it, it, I think it translates to energy elixir or something like that. Uh, it means the sort of places of energy in your body. Uh, the top one 
is what in the West we call the third eye, uh, right? It's, it's in your forehead. The middle one is right in the middle of your sternum between your nipples <coughs> and then inside the chest cavity. And the lower one is about two fingers below your navel, right? And then again, inside, um, inside your, your, your belly cavity. <laughs> I've got a bigger belly. It's, it's, it's back in there, right? It's not on the surface here. It's, it's back in here somewhere. Uh, if you've got a, a, a biggish belly, um, so it's not on the surface, it's inside, it's inside your body. But we're gonna be doing this hand motion at each of those three levels, the same hand motion. What we'll start is imagine we're holding a ball and that our elbows are very heavy. So that kind of relaxes our shoulders and pulls our shoulders down. So we're not tensed up like this, the shoulders are relaxed and we're holding the ball. Then we're gonna push the ball out. As you push the ball out, just the elbow will straighten out, right? I'm not going to be like doing very much. I'm not moving my shoulder. The shoulder is rotating slightly as the arm moves, but I'm basically just pushing forward by straightening the elbow. Then what I'm gonna do is turn the palms outward. I'm not turning like this. Again, this all stays steady. Just rotate the wrist so that the palms are faced outward, right? When the palms are outward, I'm just going to open by opening the shoulder joint so that my arms go to 45 degrees. I'm not opening far like this, right? It's just at a 45 degree angle, right? That's a comfortable uh, place for your shoulder to be at. Beyond that, you're going to lose the ability for energy and strength to flow through your shoulder. Um, so you go out to 45 degrees and then you rotate the palms to face inward and you close the shoulder joint until your hands are back at the same place. And then again, you rotate the shoulder joint and pull the elbow in and that brings it back to your chest. So we're gonna do that at chest height, at the upper Dantian forehead height, at chest height. And then we're also going to do it at the lower height, but we're not gonna move the hands down at the start. What we're gonna do is let the wrist relax so that the fingers, the index fingers are pointed down at 45 degrees and then push the hands along that 45 degrees so that our arm makes a line going down at 45 degrees. And that will have us at the right height. So from here, we'll relax and push out and then open and then close and then come in. And when we come in at the very end, we're gonna use just our fingers to lightly touch in front of the Dantian and then bring the hands back up to the chest height. So we'll be doing that at those three levels. And as we do that, we're gonna be moving our weight forward and backward, forward and backward. Every time the hands go forward, the torso goes forward. We move forward onto the front, the front leg. Every time the hands go back, we sink back onto the back leg. Um, so I'm going to do it facing the camera, and then I'll do it facing the side to get both uh, both angles. So we shift our weight onto one leg, touch the heel to the front. At this point, the hands should be. Oh, sorry. At this point, when you're in the Wuji posture, you raise the hands to the chest. As you shift your weight and touch the heel to the front, the hands will go up to the forehead. Then we can push forward, the hands will go out. We're going to rotate the palms out and push back onto the back leg, opening the arms. Rotate the palms back forward and push everything forward. The arms close, the torso goes forward. Then we're gonna push our body backwards and pull our hands back into the forehead. Then to lower the arm, we just let the elbow drop and the shoulder rotate, right? So all of this is just shoulder rotation. Now we're gonna push out and push forward, rotate the palms, push back and open, rotate the palms, push forward and pull back. 
So all of your motion should be generated by just pushing from the foot, pushing forward, pushing from the front foot, pushing everything backward. That's generating the motion in your hips. It's generating the motion in your torso. It's generating the motion in your hands. Everything is propelled by that, uh, that motion. So we've pulled back to chest height. Now we relax the fingers so they're at 45 degrees and push down and forward. Rotate the wrists, open and push back. Rotate the wrists, close and push forward. And then push back and pull the hands in. And at the end, just as you land on the, on the leg, full, uh, your weight is fully on your back leg now, you can touch your fingers to your dantian and raise the hand back to chest height. So that's one repetition in one direction, right? This is called three dantians, nine directions, because we do uh, one repetition in uh, each direction, each cardinal direction, but we count every direction as many times as we do that at one repetition. So we don't just count this direction, we count this direction, and then if I do it again, we count it a second time. So in this, I'll show you the turning footwork. We'll be doing all these back and forth, back and forth. So that's one repetition here. Uh, with the right, standing on the right foot with the left foot forward. Then we'll turn the left foot in, shift onto the left foot, and turn to the right. Now our right foot is forward, but what we're gonna do is shift onto the right foot, and then all the weight is on the right foot, and we'll place our left foot forward again. And now we can do it in the second direction, right, at this angle. So the same foot is forward, the left foot was forward before, it's still forward, and now my hands are at my chest height while I was turning. Once I've placed so when I was turning, the hands were at the chest height. Once I'm onto my right foot and I'm placing my left foot, I raise the hands to the forehead. <coughs> Let's see, get in frame here. Okay, so now my foot is touching forward and my hands are raised to the forehead, I'll do it again. As I push my body weight forward onto the front leg, the hands go out. Then I rotate the palms, and I push back onto the back leg and the arms open. I rotate the palms and I close everything pushing forward. I push backwards and pull the arms back in to the forehead. Now I lower the arms, the hands to the chest height, push forward with everything, rotate the palms, push back and open, rotate the palms, push forward and close. Push backwards and pull the arms in. Now I'm going to get to the lower Dantian by relaxing the wrists so that hands point at 45 degrees and as I push forward the arms just follow that line. Now I'm at 45 degrees, now I'm at the right height for that Dantian. I rotate the wrists and push back. Rotate the wrists and push forward. I pull back and touch the Dantian and then as I come off of this foot, I raise the hands to the chest. And then I can turn again by turning my left foot in, right? So that my hips are to the corner and I have my weight on both feet. And then I shift my weight onto my left foot and release the right toe so that the foot can open and I face to the, the third direction. Then I will shift the weight onto that leg, swing the hips under and move the left foot forward. Now I do the same repetitions. I'm not going to do it away from the camera because you can't really see it, but uh, I'll do all those repetitions in this direction. And when I'm done, I turn my toe in, I shift my weight, I turn the toe out again, I shift to this leg, and I put that same left foot forward. So now I'm in the fourth direction. And then I'll do all the repetitions this way. Again, you saw me doing the first two, so you've got all the angles. Um, actually, 
I'll do it from this angle too, so you can see the open side. So you saw the, the front leg side, and now you see the back leg side. <coughs> so we're at this position. I'm going to push forward, rotate, push back, and open, rotate, push forward, and close, push back, and lower the palms. Push forward, push back, and open. Push forward and close. Push back. Now relax the wrists to 45 degrees. Push forward and down. Push back and open. Push forward and close. Push back and bring it in until you touch the Dantian. And then raise the hands to the chest again. Turn the foot in. Right, so do the two feet. So basically you just turn, turn, and then you can step. Um, and we're going to do this direction one more time. That's the fifth direction. That will be all of the directions with the left foot facing forward, or the left foot forward. Then we'll do four directions with the right foot forward. So we do all of the same, same uh, three Dantian levels that we did before. When we finished, we've touched the Dantian, Instead of turning in, we're going to turn out, right? So instead of uh, turning in, we're just going to place the foot behind so that the heels are together and they're 90 degrees. Again, my hips are pointed towards the, the corner. I have my weight on both legs. I can now shift my weight onto the left leg and turn this foot in. And now I'm able to place the right foot forward, right? Uh, so now this will be exactly the same, just pushing onto the right leg instead of pushing forward onto the left leg. So now the right leg is forward. I do all of the different levels, the middle level, the lower level. And when I'm done, I turn my right foot in. I shift to the right foot. I turn the left foot to the back. I shift onto the left leg, swing my hips under, touch the right leg. Now I can do it again with the right leg forward. Do all of the different uh, levels, three Dantian's levels, turn my right toe in, shift onto the right leg, open the left leg, shift onto the left leg, swing my hips under, and touch the right leg to the front. Then I can do again all of those uh, three Dantian's. That's my third direction on my right foot forward. So we're now at eight. Um, uh, eight directions total. So our last direction will be turning in and once again for me facing the camera shifting to the right leg opening the left leg shift on to the left leg and place the right leg forward and then we'll do all three Dantians in this direction and we get to the final end and we're touching the Dantian here as you raise your hands back to chest tight just bring the foot back in and you're back in that upright Wuji posture. And then in the Wuji posture, right, you should be sunk down a little bit. So we're going to just do the same thing from the breathing exercise and push the hands down and exhale and stand up until we're upright. So that is three Dantians and nine directions, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's the three Dantians, nine directions, Qigong. Uh, at the end, your hands will probably be, um, usually they can get quite like red and splotchy um, from excess blood flow. Uh, typically, a good way to kind of like just uh, calm that blood flow down is just tap, tap your hands around on your body, right, on all your other muscles. And... Uh, that's the end of the, the Qigong set. Um, while you're doing that, so if you want to add the breathing in, the breathing goes very simple, right? Just like the hands always follow what you're doing with your feet. If you're, if you're pushing forward on your feet, your hands are moving forward. If you're pushing back, your hands are moving backwards. Uh, <clears throat> the breathing is also the same. So when you're going forwards, 
you're inhaling. So if I'm doing this, I'm inhaling. And then as I go back, I'm exhaling. I say that backwards. Oh, no, sorry. I said it backwards. As you go forward, you're exhaling. As you sink back, you're inhaling. Um, I just got the, the breathing mixed up. But um, yeah, so that's a very simple. Um, Qigong exercise that you can do um, called Three Dantian's Nine Directions.